did either council wish to be heard before I inquire of Mr. Hall? Ms. Cousins, if you could come up to the podium. Good morning, Your Honor. Adrian Cousins and Jeff Isaacman appearing on behalf of Mr. Hall, who again is present in the courtroom. Um, Your Honor, where we left, last left off at the last hearing was you had instructed defense counsel to submit a list of questions on a very narrow topic to see whether or not Mr. Hall could answer a very narrowly ta tailored set of questions and whether or not his Fifth Amendment privilege would be implicated in those questions. I've had a chance to review those questions, Judge. I've reviewed them with Mr. Hall. And to summarize, Mr. Hall cannot answer any of the questions that defense put forward. And I'm happy to expand on the reasons why he can't answer any of those questions. Um, uh, let's just focus on how Mr. Floyd looked in the SUV, because that was the very limited group of questions that I thought might not incriminate him. Absolutely, Judge. And if you look at the list that defense proposed, um, I think that that really starts getting into that topic at question seven. So question seven proposed by the defense was, after conducting your business in Cup Foods, did you return to the vehicle with Mr. Floyd? Mr. Hall cannot answer that question. Mr. Hall cannot put himself in that car with Mr. Floyd. Again, this was a car that was searched twice and drugs were recovered twice. If Mr. Hall puts himself in that car, he exposes himself to constructive possession charges of the drugs that were found in that car. And it's important to note, Judge, that Mr. Hall exposes himself to that charge whether or not Mr. Chauvin is convicted or acquitted. Whatever happens with this case, the state can still come back and charge Mr. Hall with constructive possession of drugs in that car, so he can't put himself in that car. Furthermore, the questions that come after that, did you notice a change in Mr. Floyd's behavior while sitting in the car? How would you describe his behavior? Did you tell BCA agents that Mr. Floyd was drowsy or asleep? Mr. Hall cannot answer any of those questions without potentially incriminating himself. We discussed this at the last hearing, Judge, but there's a potential third degree murder liability here under that overdose statute, which again is very broad. If Mr. Hall puts himself in that car, he's now establishing a timeline of events. So let's say Mr. Hall takes the stand. He very limitedly testifies to, this is what Mr. Floyd was doing. This is what, how Mr. Floyd looked. These were his behaviors. This is the change in his behaviors. Let's say Mr. Chauvin is then acquitted. He is now given the state on a silver platter testimony to use against him in a third degree murder charge if they decide to bring it. All right, thank you. Mr. Hall, I'm going to have you uh, step up to the podium because I'm going to ask you a few questions, basically whether you are going to invoke your Fifth Amendment privilege. So if you could swap places with your attorney. Good morning, sir. Good morning. You understand, Mr. Hall, uh, you do have a Fifth Amendment right not to be compelled to incriminate yourself. Do you understand that? Yes. All right. And you understand that applies even when you are not one of the parties to the case, but when you're a witness in a trial, do you understand that? Yes. You understand that your attorney, and I'm sure they have given you uh, advice about whether to invoke your Fifth Amendment right against compelled self-incrimination. But ultimately, it's your choice. You understand that? Yes, sir. All right. And you'll have to speak up just a little bit, and I'll turn up the podium. There we go. Uh, do you understand this is your choice? So you could disregard the advice of your attorneys if you wanted to. Yes, sir. Uh, knowing all that, do you, you've had a chance to look at the questions that were proposed by both sides? I have. Would you be willing to answer those if I were to put you on the stand and swear you in as a witness? No, I am not. Okay, and why would you not answer those? I'm fearful of criminal charges going forward. I have open charges that's not settled yet of my personal stuff. So basically you are invoking your Fifth Amendment right against compelled self-incrimination? Yes, sir. All right, thank you, sir. You can have a seat. Uh, any of the parties wish to be heard on this issue? I think we've had argument already, but just in case there's anything else. 
<laughs> All right, I'm going to advise both sides to file your proposed questions uh, as essentially an offer of proof on what uh, you would have asked Mr. Hall. But I am finding that he has uh, a complete Fifth Amendment privilege here. Uh, I had earlier said that possibly he could talk about how Mr. Floyd looked in the car, but counsel's argument is persuasive that that could provide a link. And since it's not just evidence that would incriminate a person, but also provide a link to incriminating evidence, I do find that his invocation of his Fifth Amendment rights is valid, and accordingly I am going to quash the subpoena. Anything else? All right, thank you.